in terms of global shared experience, this is it. This is going to get deadly and people you know are going to die. Pretty scared of it when you see the first really sick patients coming in. This is also the time for holistic people to shut the fuck up. I could really not think this would happen to us. optimistic like naturally and I think that we will have positive changes the situation escalated uh, so fast if this stays like this the red virus in all NHS Eu acho que vai ser um absoluto milagre se a gente não tiver uma tragédia de proporções assim gigantescas I worry about mom. As long as we have slanted eyes, I think we are Chinese for many people. So before we were invisible, now we're visible. I have no foreseeable income. I bought a car and drove. I escaped New York. We live in a world where it's instant, instant, instant. Everything's at 100 miles an hour. It's going to be the same. The rich people will profit hugely, and the middle class will get absolutely destroyed. Damage the economy. Grateful on a daily basis that we're not going through what a lot of people are going through. For me, Mother Nature needs to rest. It's the God's will, I think. The time has now come for us all to do more. We had the first case near Milan. We weren't really worried about the news from China. That was a bit uh, stupid. And then we realize we got it. We have it now in Italy. It's here. Dobbiamo essere lucidi, misurati, rigorosi, responsabili. At the beginning, nobody had a clue. Nobody. Everything happened really fast. You see it coming and then boom. There was a clear feeling of being left uh, to our own devices from a government standpoint. In Cairo at the moment, we have a curfew from 7 p.m. till 6 a.m. in the morning. The streets are completely in lockdown. We can't travel more than two kilometers radius from where we live. In Jakarta, a lot of people is doing their things. The traffic is still there. I mean, people still go outside. Yo estoy en cuarentena obligatoria hace más de un mes. Yo estoy aquí en el hotel uh, desde el 24 de febrero. I've been at home for eight weeks, I think. To stay at home, protect our NHS, but save lives. We absolutely have to acknowledge our privileged situation and the fact that, you know, lockdown for us has not been difficult. O nosso município está com muitos casos e o nosso município não tem estrutura para acolher tantos doentes. 
principal hospital parece que saturou. A UTI não Covid lotada e a UTI Covid com quatro leitos. There is a lot of people still going to work. People who do the concierge, the cleaners, people who work in the supermarkets. These people still are expected to go to work, yet the corporations have all let their employees work from home. People are losing their jobs. We're seeing businesses close. You know, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're in trouble. I just feel it is a different experience to which kind of social background you're living in at this moment in time. I went to Peru on uh, March 7th. Two days into us being in the jungle is when Peru decided they were going to do their quarantine and kind of their lockdown was going to go into effect. And they gave really just 24 hour notice. Maybe try and get out of the country. We didn't think that was even possible being where we were. Things immediately started happening and people scrambling like, oh, let's rent a bus and we're going to drive over the Andes to Lima, you know, and things like that. That sounded a little bit crazy. And then we just kind of started going with, okay, we're just going to see what happens. And, you know, like a lot of unknown and uncertainty. We connected with the, the embassy uh, down there in Peru. And um, we got a text and then a call saying, hey, we got a small plane to get you out of Pacalpa to fly you into Lima to get on a bigger plane to go to the U.S. But I was more concerned about getting back and being home with my family. It really felt like the window was narrowing and I think I did make the right choice of like either I went home you know, on March 31st or I might not you know get home for months. People were starting to get scared. New York got really quiet. All you could hear is ambulance sirens. The first death in New York was actually a few blocks from me. If I got it, I knew that there wouldn't be a hospital bed for me. The hospitals didn't have enough ventilators. There wasn't enough staff. There wasn't enough beds. My dad offered for me to come here to Texas. When I first drove out of New York, I was very scared and uncertain. I didn't know if I was making the right choice or not. I was afraid of contracting it and spreading it to my dad. I just bought a car and now I'm driving halfway across the country. What am I doing? My anxiety level has just gone 180. I feel incredibly lucky. My sister lives in U.S., in Jacksonville, Florida. She's a store manager, and right before the confinement, lots of people insulted her, saying, don't eat dogs or... They would just like go to her store and, and just throw things, you know, around. It comes from China. That's why. It comes from China. I want to be accurate. I've heard few friends telling me, oh, um, I don't think this will happen because maybe you don't look Chinese, but there is a really strong anti-Chinese sentiment, which extends to anti-Asian sentiments. I still don't have anything against Chinese, and I think I would never have that. But I think my environment will change, so I have to be careful in that sense, I guess. So I saw a guy dying in front of me. The person died in front of me, in the door of a hospital, and he came in a situation horrible. The medics came, it didn't take five minutes, and he died in this period. Esse cara acordou se sentindo mal. Depois do almoço, ele começou a ter dificuldade de muito grande respirar. Ficou muito ofegante. A família decidiu é, levar ele para o hospital. Botaram ele no carro, no Uber. No Uber, ele já perdeu a consciência. E quando ele chegou ali no hospital, ele ainda estava um pouco ofegante. E antes dele ir para a máquina, ele já estava morto. Eu até pensei em tentar fazer um CPR nele. Mas eu estava só com uma máscara simples, achei que ia me colocar em risco demais, acabei não fazendo. 80, 90% dos pacientes no hospital que eu estou trabalhando em são todos Covid. Foi um mistério absoluto onde todos os outros pacientes que nós normalmente temos foram. Essa pessoa, a esposa, 
came in. She just got in in time for when he passed away. And then we sat with her and, and talked for an hour or so and talked about how they met, the life they have together, their children, their experiences. Yeah, that's, that's heartbreaking. Every patient that you speak to or that you care for has one of those stories. Minha experiência começou eu com muita dor no corpo. Quando foi após cinco dias, eu não aguentei mais de tanta dor. Dia 23, eu passei mal o dia inteiro. Quando foi à tarde, eu dei tipo um colapso respiratório. Você não respira. E a dor é enorme. Chamou a ambulância, a ambulância chegou rapidinho, porque a gente achou que estava dando ataque cardíaco, porque eu praticamente quase que desmaiei. E aí que eu vi que eu estava ruim, porque você vê que eles médicos, parecendo que estava indo para a lua. Aí, naquele momento ali, que eu senti assim, que realmente o negócio era perigoso. My mum had symptoms, you know, the loss of taste, the temperatures, and then my dad ended up getting a temperature and mum was slowly getting better, thank goodness. He goes into hospital and then one guy, he said, go home, there's nothing we can do. He gets discharged, I think, the next day. We thought, okay, he's still eating, he wasn't too bad, maybe he can fight it. But then obviously we're looking at his oxygen saturation and it's going down and down and down and down. His lips were going kind of violetly blue. And obviously, obviously he just really, really wanted to kiss and hug him. But then he kind of couldn't. Overnight, it just went massively downhill, and uh, you could see like his, you know, like the breathing was was going really, really fast, really, really fast. And it was, you know, from here and not where it should be down there. Towards the end, we were like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna kiss him and hug him," and literally, like, don't, don't care, I get it, don't care. <laughs> My mum held his, held his hand, my sister and myself, and my sister was saying to him, it's okay, Dad, you can, you can let go. You can go and see your mum, because he always thought that his mum was looking after him. And then he let go, and, and then and we lost him, and he passed away. If I could have... Taken, taken this evil disease out of him and given it to myself. Of course, we, we all would have done that. I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus patients and I shook hands with everybody. I have lost nobody to coronavirus in the United States. Nobody. And it doesn't mean we won, and we are totally prepared. Do you see what, what it does to the body? It's not just flu. As the UK death toll soars. At some point, I was very scared for my parents. National solidarity. Minha grande aflição não é comigo, mas o que eu posso ver do sofrimento humano. Eu ouvi casos e casos e casos de que a pessoa estava bem, teve gripe, teve dor de cabeça, febre, acordou naquela manhã se sentindo um pouco mal e evoluiu para a morte em questão de duas, três horas. É tão contagioso e as famílias não podem entrar, não podem passar esse tempo, não podem ter essa closure, não podem grievar. Foi com as equipes de recolhimento de corpos, umas 10 casas, eles estão recolhendo 20, 30 corpos por dia. 
if we don't have work until 2021, what will happen, you know? I have anxiety. I do have anxiety. I've been applying for unemployment for uh, five weeks now, and I haven't seen a dime. I'd be lying if I said that the thought of a global depression doesn't keep me up at night. Look at this shit. This is unbelievable. I don't have any work and may not have an industry really to come back to. This country is the land of opportunities, but it's also like a, one of the biggest uh, developed countries that lives a check by check. You must stay at home. We don't know how long we can like maintain this. If we don't save those frontline workers, they can't save us. I hope in the years to come. I'm concerned more of a lack of unity. Some days are good and some days are bad. It's not true that, oh, all you need is a lot of uh, determination and, uh, you know, if you work hard, things will happen. Well, no, no, they won't. That's not the case. Sometimes there are wars that you haven't started. Sometimes there are diseases that you haven't spread. That's not the case. That's why we should believe in science and we should start fucking lighting the candles and pray. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is tonight in intensive care at St. Thomas's Hospital in London, suffering from the effects of coronavirus. When it's all about profit and costs over lives, you expose the absolute worst of humanity, but then the best of humanity as well from where it comes from a real genuine place. Um, it's awesome. It's humbling. It's like the first time in my life I felt appreciated as a doctor. Countries that are more developed have a responsibility towards people that they don't have access to education. Seeing a lot of the politicians clap, you know, makes me grit my teeth. This idea of us being heroes, I really hate this. My deepest sympathy. These are the people that have consistently voted for cuts to staff, that have cut grants to student nurses. You know, they're absolute bastards. We're increasing the number of staff in our hospitals, and we're also investing in life-saving equipment. For years, our profession has been denigrated in the press and we've not been given any respect and we've had constant pay cuts. It's ironic and it's galling. I don't think anyone really feels supported by them. It's all just lip service. I mean, if it was, if it was an organisation, it would be up for manslaughter, for manslaughter, for manslaughter, for manslaughter. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good I miss my friends and I miss hugging people. Like I don't even hug my mom. Los besos, los abrazos. Los extraño mucho como poder salir a bailar. I miss really seeing people from abroad coming here and enjoying their holidays. And... Pub man, oh, tem saudade de ir num bom boteco tomar uma cerveja com meus amigos. Job <laughs> and basketball. <laughs> Look, that's what's going on, and we are inside. How do I mute this? This bottom left, just press the mute button. Bottom left. I don't think it's ever going to be okay, ever again, for the bartender to squish your, his, the lime into the drink. For game collective horny is, like, you can't fuck for a month, so it's, and probably for other two fucking months uh. i'm really afraid that like we will not be able to watch movies cinemas anymore <coughs> whose cough, who's cough is that is that him i think it was with her stop coughing like that i had an experience where i went to the supermarket i felt quite anxious if you go to the grocery store and you find someone if you get any closer to somebody people just coming a bit too close you're not quite sure one guy wanted to hug me and i was like hey i know we're all in this together <laughs> You know, stay, stay away. But stay away. <laughs> what are you doing, uh, back off? But stay away from me. I think people will need to get used to, to the idea that certain things will have to give. There will be something that comes out of this. I just don't know what it is. Maybe a common understanding of all having to go through the same thing at the same time. 
I hope we take the opportunity to change. It's not all about growth. It just means that we're pushing, pushing, pushing until there's nothing left. Everyone was on this whirlwind, like this roundabout of crazy consumption and egotistical sort of blink of myopia in a way. This whole thing of living beyond your means to have bigger and bigger and more and more, I think there's going to be a move away from that. Life will not go back to normal as we used to live it. Nadie sale ileso de esto. But we'll learn a lot about ourselves, about how much we were going too fast. At the end, everybody will need help from the government or family. Hopefully this will change the way everyone looks at the world. No tenemos el control. No somos invencibles. Pero podemos luchar contra lo que venga. At least it's not the end of the world. Hey, oh my god, look at that. <laughs> oh, she's just woken up. Hello. If you've seen Jakarta nowadays, it's a very clear sky, blue sky. As a family, we're all in this together. That's the positive side, and the girl coming in October, so that's like... <laughs> <laughs> the world will break everyone, and some of us will be strong at the broken places.